Hey, what's going on guys, and welcome back to another Fallout 4 mod review, and today we're checking out a brand new lore-friendly energy weapon known as the Laser Garand, a post-war battle rifle by Targeted Fox. Now, if the name wasn't self-explanatory, this is going to add a new M1 Garand that has been converted to shoot lasers which sounds pretty implausible, but this is Fallout after all. This is going to make use of a lot of parts from the original M1 Garand mod by AzXAz, and it's going to add some cool new stuff as well to add that neat sci-fi look and the laser functionality. The way that this weapon actually functions is it uses a new ammo type, well, it's going to use fusion cells in-game, but when it comes to the actual model of it, it is essentially a handful of small energy cells from past Fallout games that have been crammed into a grand clip. And there's even a couple of attachment upgrades at the weapon's workbench that change this model further to use bigger cells like the in-game fusion cells. The weapon definitely looks very scrappy, very handmade, and very Fallout. It definitely looks like somebody just took an M1 Garand and bashed a bunch of electronics onto it, and it honestly sells that look quite a bit, as you can see on screen now. Luckily, since this does make use of a lot of the parts of the original M1 Garand mod, it does also utilize the M1 Garand animations, which fit just fine, and it even has leveled list integration, so you will be able to find this thing out in the world, which is pretty crazy. If you want to get your hands on one of these, you'll be able to find it after level 15 on vendors and factions like the Institute, Railroad, Brotherhood of Steel, and Gunners. A bit odd in my opinion to have this thing spawning on the Institute doesn't really seem like something that's up their alley, but hey, at least it'll help to add some more variety to their leveled lists. Additionally, this thing does have a different version of it that allows you to pick it up as a replacer for the Vanilla Laser Musket. So now, instead of the laser musket, the Minutemen will be running around with laser M1 Garand. So if that's your thing, that's pretty neat. Just be aware that if you download the replacer version, it will not be added to the leveled list whatsoever. It won't spawn on any other factions aside from where you would find the original laser musket. This mod has undergone quite a bit of updates since its first release, and it is in what the author calls its finalized state, though there is definitely room for a couple more bug fixes and some polish here and there, and the author does state that they may add on to it later to add things like unique variants. But for now, this is pretty much what you're getting. Let's go ahead and take this weapon in-game and check out its stats and other cool features. So here we have the in-game version of the Laser Garand in its most basic configuration with no attachments and no perks. This thing has a base damage of 80, which is a lot. This thing packs quite a punch right out the gate with the worst attachments. It uses fusion cells as its ammo type, has a fire rate of 73 in semi-automatic, a range of 203, an accuracy of 58, a weight of 10.2 pounds, and a value of 127. Pretty balanced stats, except for that damage. Again, this does spawn a bit higher level, around 15 and 20, but that's still pretty high, especially considering that I have no perks on, and we can upgrade this even further with more attachments. So keep it in mind, this thing's going to hit like a truck. In terms of animations, like I said earlier, this is going to utilize the M1 Garand animations from the original M1 Garand mod, but they look really nice here. I just want to go ahead and show it off for you so you can see and hear the weapon for yourself and determine if this one is right for you. In terms of attachments over at the weapons workbench, this mod does have a bit going on. Starting with the receivers, we have standard up through advanced. They are a bit out of order here, but the advanced is going to give you a maximum damage of 115 compared to the starting 80. So unlike other weapons where it typically doubles the base damage, this one just adds a little bit onto it. But we also have access to something known as the auto receiver, which is going to require a handful of parts, including... 20 military grade circuit boards which is going to convert this thing to full auto well sort of there is a small bug with the auto receiver that i'll go ahead and show on screen now it is full auto when you hip fire but when you ads it goes back to semi-auto which sounds like a bug but you know it could be considered a pretty neat feature it allows you to take nice precision shots while you aim and hip fire is completely full auto which is pretty interesting but i don't think it's working as intended 
When it comes to barrels, we only have one barrel option, and that is the standard barrel. I would love to see more barrel options, but maybe we'll get that in future updates. For stocks, we have the same story, just the one standard stock. For sights, though, we do have quite a bit of options. We have the standard iron sights. We also have something known as the metal piece for attachments, which is going to add a little rail or mount there for future use. We have the heat shield. We have the short scope, the makeshift red dot, and the long scope. Now let's go ahead and throw on the metal piece for attachments so we can check those out as well. We have the option to add on a muzzle device, of course allowing us to throw on no muzzle, a long focuser, and a gamma suppressor. Now here is what is known as the tactical attachment and this is what goes on that scope mount. You have the option to throw on a spoon reflex sight made by Pig or a laser sight made by myself. Though, one thing that I have noticed that I do want to point out for people who are downloading this, both of these are misaligned. The Spoon Reflex Sight was pointing way off in the middle of nowhere, and I had to align that one myself for footage today. And the Laser Sight doesn't actually utilize the Laser Sight functionality that I included with it. It doesn't actually allow you to aim with the Laser Sight, it's just kind of there, which is interesting. Now, we also have an option to throw on some blue tape, since this does use parts from the Azx as M1 Garand. And then we do have some ammo choices. We have depleted fusion cells, a distorted internal capacitor, extended fusion plus batteries, internal recharging array, the Poseidon Energy military grade circuits, and the Watts prototype internal generator. And all of these are going to change the magazine capacity as well as, in some cases, change the magazine model or the clip model. I don't know, it's a laser thing, so it's different. All right, and now then it is, of course, time for our damage test. We'll be running three tests today, the standard old version of this weapon with no attachments and no perks, a fully upgraded semi-auto one, and a fully upgraded full auto one to see how they compare to each other. Now, the full auto test is going to be a bit funky, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Let's start over here on the left with our standard Deathclaw, aiming for the weak point with the basic version of this weapon. Let's see how it performs. And in exactly 10 shots, the Deathclaw is down, meaning we only have to reload once after the Deathclaw dies. Though in combat, that may prove to be a bit difficult. You're probably going to have to reload a couple of times. Now then, let's try out the full auto. What makes this thing weird is, like I said earlier and showed on screen, it's only full auto and hip fire. So aiming for the weak point is going to be kind of difficult. But I'm going to do my best. Nice. Not too bad. I think it died right before the last shot, making this about 11 shots, maybe 12, which makes a lot of sense. This does just a little bit less damage than the standard weapon, but it does have full auto capabilities, so that's pretty neat. Now then, let's try out a fully upgraded semi-auto version. Here is that non-functional laser sight I was talking about. And let's do our best to aim for the Deathclaw's weak point with a fully upgraded receiver. My guess is about 7-ish shots. I was close, we got it down in 6, so definitely worth grabbing that upgraded receiver, though I'd recommend sticking to, say, an iron sight with this weapon. But yeah guys, that is the Laser Garand by Targeted Fox. Now, Targeted Fox is pretty new to adding completely new weapons into the game, so this is definitely some excellent work and a huge step in the right direction. There's definitely a lot of really cool potential here, and I think the idea for this mod is absolutely awesome. The style of this weapon fits Fallout very, very well, and I love the lore-friendly aesthetic. It just needs some minor amounts of polish, but then it's a totally usable and functional mod, so this is really, really cool. Definitely one to keep your eyes on. If you want to download it now, it will be linked down in the description below, or at the very least, watch out for some updates and maybe some of these small issues like side alignment will be fixed. 
With that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to drop a rating. Consider subscribing if you haven't already for more videos just like this. A big shout out to all of my patrons for supporting every single video. And a very special thank you to Astro, Captain Chaos, Helljumper, Indecisive, Wolf, Jackie Noid, Cushy, Moonlit Gamer, Feed, and Youth RC for joining that tier 3 Patreon membership. If you want to support the channel on Patreon, it'll be linked down in the description below, but it is completely optional. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace!